Good morning ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another video with me Andrew. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create this nozzle holder using FreeCAD. Now this isn't my design so I've left a link in the description down below which should take you over to a site by RepRap which I believe is a self-replicating machine uh, and that goes on that so uh, if, you're, if you're interested go and check it out. Okay so the first thing we're going to want to do is create a brand new document. So I'm going to go over here, click on new document. I'm going to set the drop down here to part design. I'm going to click on the sketch up here. Set the view to isometric and click on the XZ plane. Press OK. So now that we're in a sketch mode, what we're going to do is we're going to need to create some simple geometry. Um, but the idea of this is so that we can uh, revolve it around the center point, which will then give us about two thirds of the part we're actually trying to create. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this icon up here, which is going to toggle our geometry to a construction line. I'm going to click on this line up here, click on the center point, move it along until the uh, horizontal line glows yellow, click on that, and then going to create another line going up in the vertical plane, wait until the line goes yellow, like so, and then I'm going to strain both these lines, this is going to be 8mm, and the horizontal is going to be 40mm, like so. Now I'm going to toggle back to geometry, same icon, click on the polyline, and I'm going to start about two thirds down this line. So now I'm going to move it up, click on this point, along, down, along, up, and along. So you can see that when I'm creating this line, you can see a slight line that's appearing. Uh, this means basically it's going to be constrained in that direction. So that's going to be horizontally constrained. So if I, if I click that now, that will then constrain it so that it's perfectly horizontal. I'm then going to create a, uh, an angled line coming down. And then as I go to go down, the vertical line appears. So it's completely different to the original line, which is going along. It's going to be coming down, so it's going to be vertical. So I'm going to click like that, come in a bit, go at an angle, come along again, move down. Again, all of them are still being constrained as vertical and horizontal lines. Come along, go up, along again. And then I'm going to go at a slight angle, finishing on this exact point. So, now that we've created the geometry, I'm going to constrain all of this uh, to the specific dimensions that I'll say. And then what we'll do is we'll rotate that around the center point. So, let's start constraining our sketch. So, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this line, hold down shift and click on this point. And then I'm going to constrain the line to the point. So, now these two lines are in line. Uh, I'm going to click on the horizontal measurement, click on this point to this point, that's going to be 4.8 millimeters. I'm then going to click on to this point and this point, and that's going to be 4.6 millimeters. I'm also then going to constrain on the vertical the bottom of this pocket, sorry, bottom of this pocket to the center point, and that's going to be 6 millimeters. The vertical again so from this point to this point is going to be four millimeters distance from this point to the center line is going to be five millimeters and I'm just going to drag this along slightly so it just evens out I'm then going to this line here should be constrained in the vertical but not the horizontal so now what I'm going to do to do is I'm going to constrain that to this point which is going to be 3.2 millimeters now overall, what I really need to do is constrain this line to this point here, which I'm going to click like so, and that's constrained that to 40 mil now. So I'm just going to do a bit of readjusting here just to make sure that everything's lining up correctly, like so. Okay, so now we're sort of getting somewhere. Okay. I'm going to click on the dual arrow here, click on the angular constraint, I'm going to click on this line here, and this line here. I'm going to set up to 150 degrees. I'm then going to constrain this point here to this point here, which is going to be 0.55 millimeters. And I'm also going to do that in the vertical as well, 0.55 millimeters. What that will do is, is when we revolve it, that will create a 45 degree chamfer on the inside.
this next measurement is going to be from this point to the overall 40 millimeter length, which is going to be 11.5 millimeters. The vertical measurement of this point to the center line is 3.25 millimeters. We still have a very slight sort of drop off there. And what that is, is when we actually revolve this, obviously we've got a champ here, this is actually for a thread. Unfortunately, you can't create threads uh, in you know, FreeCAD from what I'm aware of. Uh, if you can, please let me know in the description down below. I know there is a way of doing it, but I believe that's more of a long-handed way rather than things like Fusion, where you just select a thread and it automatically you know, puts it in after you've put in the data that you actually want. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to constrain exactly the same uh, along here, and that's going to be a 3.45 millimeter. So I'm going to click on this point to the center point, and that's going to be 3.45. And then the same with this chamfer over here, which is going to be a 0 0.55 in the horizontal, and the same with the vertical. Like so. So now what I need to do is just make sure. So what have we got here then? So that's going to be a 7.5 millimeter. So I'm going to click on here, click on here, 7.5 millimeters, and the same with this one here. So what we can actually do is, is probably just select that and create a horizontal, uh, sorry, a vertical constraint going along. So basically, I did that by selecting, by clicking down and holding, dragging over the selected points, and then clicking on this icon, the vertical constraint which has now constrained it, and our entire drawing has now gone green, which means it's all entirely constrained. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close out of that, and this is what we've got. So now I'm going to click on the revolve icon up here, and obviously it does some sort of random flying saucer sort of shape. And what we're going to do is we're going to click on the X axis, like so, which is then going to get our uh, basic geometry, uh, so we can see it's starting to come together now. So once we clicked on the x-axis, we've got something like this. Uh, the angle is 360. Basically, that's a full 360 rotation. If we put 180, it's sort of like a cut in half. You can actually see, you know, the, the chamfers coming in. We can actually see, you know, where the thread would go sort of along here. And then this just general pilot hole going through. So I'm going to set that back to 360, like so. And we're going to say OK to that. Right then, moving on to the next section, what we're going to do is so I'm going to click onto the end point here, onto this face, and to create a sketch. What I'm then going to do is just create a rectangle, like so. And then we're just going to constrain this rectangle. So this measurement here I'm going to set to 15 millimeters. This constraint from this point, from this point to the center point, is going to be 7.5, so just in half. The constraint here is going to be 8 millimeters. And the constraint from this point to the center point is going to be 6.5 millimeters. Now the 8mm could be a bit overkill, so we could change that to 5mm, let's say. It doesn't really matter, just as long as it's past this particular point uh, here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close that, and then I'm going to click on this icon, which is a subtractive, um, subtractive element. So I'm going to click there, and I'm going to pocket that by 8mm. So, okay, so now that we've created the pocket on this side, we need to create it on the opposite side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a mirror plane. I'm going to select the pocket that we just created, click OK, and I'm going to select the, the plane, that is the XZ plane, which is then going to mirror that onto the opposite side of our part. So I'm going to click OK. So now what we need to do is we need to create a Dayton plane. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on our face again, same face we did last time. And I'm going to click on this icon up here, which is then going to create this sort of orangey yellow sort of plane. I'm going to change the Z to minus 12.5, which is then going to move it into our part. And I'm going to click OK to that. Now, if I right click on the body, click on appearance, I'm going to set the transparency to about 60, 70% like so, so that I can actually see through my part. So what I now need to do is just create a sketch on the datum plane. So I'm going to click on the datum plane and I'm going to click sketch. 
creating these grooves is pretty straightforward. So what we're going to do is we're going to, we're obviously already on the datum plane, uh, and we've already created our sketch. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a construction line. So we're going to click on this icon, click on the line, and then move it out. I'm going to do another one, which is just going to move it out like so. And then I'm going to create an angular constraint between these two. Now the angular constraint is 74.32. And I'm going to create an angular constraint between this line and this line, which is going to be uh, 180 minus 7.84, like so. So that should be equal uh, overall around these two lines. So now what I want to do, what I want to do is actually is create a parallel line on this, which is going to create our two 9 mil, and the same with this one, which is also going to be 9 mil. So now that I've switched back to the geometry tab, I'm going to create myself a circle. So I'm going to click on the center point, I didn't click on it properly, that should turn yellow, click on that, and then click on the constrained line, like so. So as that turns yellow, you should be able to plant it directly on, it should turn green. I'm now going to trim that by selecting the icon up here, and I'm going to click on the outside of this circle, around about here. And that now trims it so that it's between these two construction lines. I'm going to set the radius to 9mm, which is already set anyway. And I'm also going to set, because it says here, one degree of freedom, I'm also going to set the size of that line again, because for some reason it's totally got rid of it. I'm now going to click on the circular icon again, click on the center point when it turns yellow, drag it out, set the radius to 4.2 millimeters and that's radius as well this is not diameter it's constrained radius and now I'm also going to do the same thing I'm going to click on the that icon again and I'm going to get rid of the outside of it so now it's constrained those two we now need to create a line in between both of these so I'm going to click on the polyline click on the point there and the point here until it turns yellow and exactly the same yellow yellow now, as you can see, it's totally constrained. So I'm going to click close. And we've got our, our sketch there. I'm going to click on the datum and press spacebar, which will now hide the actual datum plane. Click on model, sketch, pocket icon, and I'm going to say two millimeters. And it's going to be in this direction. So it's going to go towards where our original datum point, our original origin is. So I'm going to click OK on that. Number one, I want to create a, a linear pattern which puts them in this direction and I also want to create a polar pattern, a rotational pattern which will then allow for these grooves to go all the way around my path. So I'm going to click on the icon up here which I believe is a multi-transform feature. So I'm going to click on that, click on the pocket that we just created and click OK. And then I'm going to right, down, right click down into this box here and I'm going to add a linear pattern. I'm going to set the length to 12 mil and I'm going to set that to 5. I'm going to click, even though it's highlighted green, I'm going to click on the x-axis and it's now going in the x-axis direction, however it's going the wrong way. So we're going to click on reverse action, which is now going to put them in the direction that I want them to be going in. I'm now going to click OK onto this point up here. I'm going to right click into this uh, area again and I'm going to add a polar pattern. I'm going to select the occurrences and set that to 4. And that's already in the correct date and plane, and it's already going in the right direction. So I'm going to click OK to that, and OK again. So now that we've completed that part, I'm going to set the body appearance back to 0% transparency, transparency, and click close on that. And so there you have it, we have our parts starting to come together now. Now what I need to do is create um, some form of fillet in these corners here. Now, did do a bit of research on the internet to try and find out uh, how to actually, you know, whether I could actually wrap the sketch around the actual part uh, and include the actual radiuses in the corner, uh, but unfortunately I couldn't find anything uh, which which could do that. So unfortunately I had to do it sort of the long way around. So the way to do that is just clicking on fillet. Oh, sorry, click on an edge, then click on fillet. I'm going to set this to 0 0.999, mainly because that's the closest I can get to one. As the actual overall gap itself is 2mm, um, it doesn't like it if you set it to 1, 
and then click on another edge, it doesn't um, like it at all. So it doesn't actually add add what it wants. So if you set that to 0 0.999, it works perfectly, even though you have a very small, small, small uh, mismatch here. It visually still looks still looks good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to add all of these uh, lines. And unfortunately, you still have to keep going back. There's no actual hotkey for you to be able to click Add Reference and then click the lines. So unfortunately, it's a bit long-winded, but it does actually work out quite well. And if you accidentally click on a face like that, click Remove Reference, click on the face, which is highlighted in purple, and that should remove the reference. So we're only trying to add the edges overall. And there we have it. So all fillets have now been completed on all of these uh, grooves. So there should be 20 altogether. And now we'll move on to the next part. For the holes, I'm going to create that are going to go through four of these grooves here. So I'm going to click on front. I'm going to set the body appearance to 60 or 70% on the transparency. I'm going to create a sketch, which is going to be on the XZ plane. So I'll click OK. And I'm going to come up here and I'm going to click on the circular icon and click roughly sort of in the middle. I'm going to set the radius to 0 0.999. So again, the reason why I'm saying it's 0 0.999, it should be 1. But unfortunately, with FreeCAD, it sort of gently touches the sides of the actual pocket, which sort of makes it look a little bit more tacky. Um, so I set it to 0 0.999 just because that just gets rid of that problem. Uh, so what I'm going to do is now is I'm just going to constrain the horizontal, which is going to be 14.5. And I'm going to constrain the vertical, which is going to be 5.2, like so. I'm then going to close the sketch. I'm going to click the pocket icon. And I'm going to set the type to two dimensions. And I'm going to set the bottom second length to 5mm as well. And what that does is that just basically cuts through both sides of the actual groove. I'm going to click OK to that and set the body appearance back to zero again on the transparency and as you can see we've now got a hole going straight through the actual groove. Now I'm going to create another uh, multi multitask. Click on the pocket we just created or the hole we just created. Right click down in the bottom box here, add linear pattern. I'm going to set this to 9 and I'm going to set the occurrence to 4. And what that should do is that should give us four holes in four of the grooves, missing out this final groove here. I'm going to click OK to that, right click again, add polar pattern, and I'm going to set that to four, and I'm going to click on the x-axis, which should then, once the computer actually catches up, without it crashing, there we go, it should then put the holes all the way around into the other uh, 12 grooves, like so. Awesome. So now I'm going to click OK on that and OK at the top, which has now given us our holes through the actual part. I'm then going to quickly chamfer uh, the edges, so a 0.2 chamfer, which can go around all of these edges and so on. So what I'm going to quickly do is I'm going to click on this edge here got the chamfer, set that to 0 0.2, add reference, and I'm going to add another reference which is going to be this overall face. Now what that should do is that should chamfer all of these grooves like so, it should chamfer the edge here, and it should chamfer all of these edges like so. And then I'm also going to add one more which is going to be on this internal face here, like so. So, there we have it. I'm going to click OK to that. Everything is chamfered. Uh, if you'd like to change the colour of your part, like I have uh, in the thumbnail slash uh, the beginning of the video, if you right click it or click on the body, click on appearance, and you can change the actual shape colour 
like so. So you can make it as dark as you want, uh, like so. Just click OK and close. So obviously you can set it to different appearances. So if we set it to bright green, oh that's the lines actually, sorry about that. Shape color, bright green if we wanted to, like so. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video of this nozzle holder. Uh, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you disliked it, give it a thumbs down. Uh, and if you have any ways uh, of me improving my videos, please leave that in the comments below. Also, if you have any ideas or anything you'd like to see uh, me create using FreeCAD, FreeCAD uh, then please again leave it in the comments down below.